Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a summary of Inside Star Citizen Storm Warning. We'll also be taking a look here at the weather coming in Alpha 3.8 and a quick summary of the Ares Starfighter as well as a couple of other little ship updates. Weather is coming to Alpha 3.8 in its first iteration anyway. It's the first step towards full planetary dynamic weather but obviously just the first step. There are planetary and weather effects in 3.8 that mix audio, uh, VFX, and the surfaces and wind and all this sort of stuff to create a more static weather experience, but it appears to be dynamic in some way. It's more planetary effects that include weather at this stage, and eventually this will all feed into a dynamic weather system in the future. The V4 Planet Tech has opened up a huge amount they can do when it comes to creating realistic breathing content for the game. Wind affects different biomes and surfaces differently. It will move through and affect rocks, metal, sand, soil and snow all differently and create appropriate effects based on that. The biome will decide what effects can spawn, so as an icy biome you'll see snow and then wind will blow snow around and then you can have more dense and stormy versions of that based on the terrain you're in and what's happening at the time. There are different LODs or levels of detail associated with the different weather systems and effects that you can see from space to ground to air. You'll have up to eight levels of detail for distance drawn weather. They don't need to render individual raindrops if you're in orbit, basically, but when you're really close to weather, they want to be able to have the sort of like droplets of water and snow and stuff landing on your visor. So. They also have a sort of like more proximate area fog level of detail for um, volumetric weather effects for characters as well. So if you're close to the, a weather system, if you're in it, then you're going to have a more sort of sense of noise and density to that weather. They want you to feel like you're actually in a storm or in heavy weather or part of uh, whatever's going on. If the wind is kicking up dust, they want you to feel but that's actually happening and, and it will obscure your vision. There will be weather effects drawn on your canopy, on your armor, your visor, your cockpit with melting snow or icy areas. Your vision may be obscured if you get enough snow on your visor, for example. And um, it's not the sort of like objects not being drawn in. It's you are having problems seeing the object because your vision is obscured. So... And this, is, will be, this will be interesting, especially with different types of armor. Some armor, potentially, I suppose, might be able to prevent sort of snow in your eyes. Little, little windscreen wipers on your goggles, <laughs> maybe heating, um, something like that. Eventually, as well, I've talked to some devs about this. They want to have environmental effects directly affecting the um, durability and effectiveness of your gear. So um, you might be in a particular type of storm and your weapons might not function as you want, or you might start taking damage from from uh, this sort of stuff as well as part of the player status system coming in the future too, things like that. And uh, the specific type of wear um, and what items are operable, that's going to be based on the weather and the biome and the wear that you've already taken, damage you've already taken to those systems. In 3.8, they have surface types and wind as part of the sort of like weather effect system. They have a global wind map, which is basically a texture that wraps around the planet and defines the wind direction and speed. And they can have wind rotating in these maps to help create a more dynamic seeming weather. I suspect they will actually move uh, this dynamically in the future for dynamic weather. The system deals with a large number of particles and they have made various tweaks to allow for this, lowering the resolution of some effects and then applying filters and basically scaling um, that back up with techniques to make them look good again without much sort of like loss of visual quality but giving a huge performance boost. And that's what a lot of Star Citizen's about when they build um, cool things and good looking stuff. They have to work out ways of getting it in game without melting everyone's CPUs and GPUs. They are currently adding a way of culling and creating particles more aggressively when you're not looking at them for weather because the weather system deals with a lot of particles simultaneously as we said. The idea here is to make weather feel like it's real but it sounds like it's not going to be 100% unified across clients so I'm not going to see the same snow that's in my eyes or my visor potentially that my teammate does they'll be the same weather and they'll be the same like wind speed and general weather going on at the same time but it doesn't sound like the snow on my, every individual like piece of snow is not going to be um rendered for both of us i, I don't expect um that would be madness surely you're unifying weather but let's let's uh, see what they do uh, i am really looking forward to what weather brings in 3.8 what it's gonna look and feel like and then obviously 
um, what the dynamic weather system uh, they make after that uh, that is planned to come in 2020 as well uh, will look like. The Ares Starfighter is a new Crusader ship that's on concept and is now available for everyone to buy from $195. It's a heavy fighter that comes in two different hulls, um, and they are probably different hulls. They're not just loadout differences. They are different hulls. They have different component slots, and uh, the weapon is literally part of the hull. You cannot change that weapon at this stage, um, potentially not ever. So there's the Ion and the Inferno. So it's a relatively small, like heavy fighter sized ship with a giant size seven gun attached to it, which is basically a weapon that would be appropriate for taking on larger ships. It's a capital ship killer is sort of like some of the marketing suggests. It was influenced by the A-10 Warthog in real life. It has a mixture of internal and external customizable missile racks. Um, I believe some of its components like the um, shield um, and, and power generators and stuff like that, they are easily accessible on the external of the ship. They wanted the ship to look like a gun with a ship attached, which they have done. The Ion is the energy long range focused version with a laser cannon and it also has an extra power plant, cooler, shield and battery. So it has extra components over the Inferno and the Inferno is a ballistic and rapid fire focused sort of um, uh, ship with heavier armor is the idea. So uh, it's basically just the differences of how they operate with their large um, size seven weapon slot. So the Ion long range, pew pew pew, um, but because it's a big laser cannon, it is going to need a load of extra cooling and, and battery and and, uh, and power plant stuff. But the Inferno, it doesn't need that um, additional um, power plant um, or cooler um, and instead needs room for ammo and the rest of the, the space is used to put armor on the ship. So it's an interesting sort of like difference of um, how you would like to engage and fight. I think the Inferno is probably going to be a lot better at taking out smaller ships because rapid fire. But I suppose if you hit uh, a smaller ship with the Ion, with with that size seven laser cannon, that's gonna that's gonna put them out potentially. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how these ships are used in the future. If you want to know more about the Ares Starfighter, the Ion, and the Inferno, uh, I've done a video on that, looking at a lot more of the details of the ship. I will link that down below. There's also an update to the Reliance series of ships with the decoupling of its twisty turny bits. CIG have said in Alpha 3.8 we've made some changes so that the wing rotation is now tied to the J key and the thruster rotation and landing gear are tied to the N key. This means you'll be able to toggle the wings between horizontal and vertical and fly in whichever state you want. That is fantastic and actually makes use of the ship. Maybe I will hate the Reliance series less. With that, it's also worth noting that the Reliance series does have a limiter in that getting out of your seat while landing gear is raised would cause some issues for your character. Therefore, you'll find once you're seated, you're unable to get back up until your landing gear is down. We are aware of that and we would love to give you that functionality. We fully agree. Allowing you to get out and walk around the Reliant while your landing gear is raised will require further engineering work on our part to make possible. But we're dedicated to getting it done and you can expect to be kept in the loop with updates from the team. There was an additional picture of inside the Argo Mole in the Chairman's Club newsletter. We still don't know when the Argo Mole will go on sale, but it's now expected to be whenever 3.8 goes live. And 3.8 is expected to go live by the 21st of December buy or before. And if you're looking for the first wave of PTU for subscribers and concierge, that could literally be any time now. We could see it later today, we could see it on the weekend, or we could see it next week. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but it's soon, very soon. We do have a ship giveaway each month for December. It's for a Carrack, the Mighty Explorer. You just have to comment on one of my videos during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. More details below. Also, if you're looking for a VPN or password manager, Nord have you covered. Shadow as well, they're an amazing way of having a gaming PC, sort of like super high spec, without the giant costs associated with that. You can have it as a subscription service and leverage the power of your internet to stream a gaming PC to, to you. Oh, bam. With any of those, use the code BoardGamer to get a discount or follow the links below.